Fans Talk Podcast family at fanstalkpodcast.com. This is episode 45 of Fans Talk TNA. This week we're going to cover the August 26, 2015 episode of Impact Wrestling on Destination America, as well as the rest of the news and notes that happened this week in TNA. My name is Garvin, and with us as always is Nick. Say hello, Nick. Don't say anything, guys, but I'm about to lead a revolution and take control of the show away from Garvin. <laughs> Um, all I have to do, I think, is hire uh, Hernandez, and then, you know. <laughs> uh, this week, we're going to talk about the ongoing feud between GFW and TNA, uh, whether or not the revolution finally took what was theirs, and the next challenger for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. This episode of Fans Talk TNA has been brought to your ears by our friends over on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, Patreon subscribers get early access to our episodes as well as bonus content that only they can get. If you aren't subscribing, just give it a go. Give it a month. See what you think. Patreon.com forward slash fans talk. All of those links as well as the full archive are available at fanstalktna.com. All right, Nick. So this week we got development in pretty much every aspect of tna uh, a little bit more gfw versus tna as we got dixie's decision on whether or not she was going to continue to work with jeff jarrett uh we got an x division title match we got the ey versus chris melendez match uh king of the mountain title race match happened so uh that's going to continue to be a thing on tna the knockouts were involved uh, tag title race. Uh, we got a tag team title match, and we got the new uh, the new challenger for EC3's uh, TNA World Heavyweight Championship. So, uh, where where would you like to start? Um, I guess we can start with the X Division since that uh, kind of sort of opened the show. First match on the card. Um, it was good, pretty standard fare for the X Division. I don't think it was one of the best they've ever had, but you know, it's an X Division match. It's always gonna be fun. So, uh, very glad that happened. Glad to see Tigre able to retain. Uh, hoping that something will start going down between him and Dutt with recent developments, but we'll see. Yeah, overall, I I, I pretty much enjoyed the match. Uh, felt kind of short. We didn't really get to see a whole lot of Sanjay Dutt. Um, it seemed like a majority of the match was DJZ versus Tigre Una, which is okay, but, you know, Dutt is, to me, the star that is in that match. Uh mm-hmm. But yeah, overall, Tigre Uno retains. Uh, that that's a good thing. It's really is showing his his credibility. But at the same time, my my only complaint, and and otherwise this was, this was perfectly fine, and I'm glad the X Division is back on on TV. Um, my only complaint was this was like another triple threat match. Why 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 do we only get triple threat matches? It seems. Yeah, I, I've seen that complaint a lot, and it's one I can't. Uh, disagree with i would like to see more singles matches i'd like to see an actual feud build up um the good thing there is i think there's a foundation for one uh as i mentioned with uh tigre and sanjay dutt um it'll be interesting to see if this might finally be the avenue for sanjay to finally become x division champion you know they always talk about him being the greatest x division star never to be champ yeah no i'm i'm with you i think that would be that would be fantastic especially with how things unfolded, you know, uh, obviously Sanjay Dutt is with GFW, so it is kind of odd to have a GFW guy represent. But um, you know, as we'll, we'll most likely talk about soon enough, um, you know, that's okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? Uh, you know, impressed you this week, or at least interested you? Uh, I, probably falling in both categories would be Rude as the next contender for the King of the Mountain Championship. Um, took a different turn than I was expecting. Uh, he finally got the recognition that he was craving and, you know, he went on to go all the way and become the next contender. So that's going to be interesting to see whether this kind of leads to a, a, a face turn considering who he's facing. Right. Yeah. Uh, we, in the King of the Mountain title race match, uh, it was basically the number one contender, uh, Mr. Anderson versus Bobby Roode versus Lashley versus James Storm. Yeah, Roode versus PJ Black should be a fantastic match. I'm definitely looking forward to it. And, you know, it's it's really odd <laughs> because you say Roode is, 
you know, the heel here. And I can, I can see it for the most part, but we're at this, we're at this crossroads. And I I think, I think we should just talk about, we should just talk about the elephant in the room (laughs) Um, to explain, but yeah, rude. I don't know if rude is the heel in this, in this upcoming match. So GFW versus TNA. um, It's been talked about as if it's a thing for two weeks now, even though it hasn't been uh, a thing. I'm sorry, three weeks now, um, up until the very end of Impact. And basically, we got Dixie Carter coming down to make her announcement on whether or not she was going to give Jeff Jarrett control of the show moving forward. Uh, she raved about you know how well they did together for the for the ten years that they were together. Um, Drew Galloway interrupts before she can uh, fully make her decision, which was most likely going to be yes. But uh, says that he <laughs> so 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 weird, so weirdly put. Uh, but he basically uh, became a detective and put his criminal criminal criminology is that. Is that the word? Uh, I think that's one he used. Uh, yeah, do English for me. Um, yeah, he used his his degree finally and basically put all the pieces together. And the guy who attacked him and took him out of the King of the Mountain uh, title match so that PJ Black could win, uh, as well as took out Bully Ray so that he could take over, is Jeff Jarrett. Everything made sense. Uh, this is what. You know, you and I had had talked about uh, over the last few weeks as well, as far as what seemed the obvious uh, route that they would go. Uh, Jeff says no. That's not that's not what happens. Karen Jarrett, Karen Jarrett is the one who <laughs> attacked both both people, right? Is that is that what she is that how it came off to you? It sounded she, like she she said the words. It was me. Yeah, <laughs> I did it. But it's it's pretty well implied she had people do it. Yeah, because as soon as that happened, as soon as she said that, um, the GFW roster like ran down to the ring. Jeff Jarrett attacked Drew, and yeah, so now we do have that full invasion. GFW has taken over. Uh, Dixie Carter's in tears, and yeah, so this is where. I thought they were going. This is where, as far as just the 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 end game, as far as GFW fully taking over, or at least you know in, in, invading in some fashion. So um, now that we've seen it play out, what what do you think? Yeah, this is pretty much where it had to go. Um, all signs are pointing to it. Commentary was showing the hand constantly. Um, I think they kind of ruled out any other option when they initially had the announcement that it's going to be TNA versus GFW on this one night and both rosters immediately started being dicks to each other. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, pretty much as expected the way it played out, it made Jeff look kind of dumb because he denied it so vehemently and like he, he dared drew to drop him if he thought he was lying. And then Karen comes out and he's just so dumbfounded. I, you're the promoter of the promotion. <laughs> How your wife moves behind you so adeptly, I don't... Un- I Again, it makes him look dumb. I, I get the thing where, you know, his wife acted. She acted so decisively. And I get why he did what he did in moving in to retroactively support her. But, and it's not that I'm opposed to the idea of Karen Jarrett being the mastermind here. It's, it's Game of Thrones-like. And I dig it, but it, it just, I can't stress it enough. It makes Jeff, it makes Jeff look so dumb. Well, I'm with you for the most part. I, yeah, it does. It does make it seem like he's not in control, but once it happened, it, it was like instantaneous. He was like, basically he, I don't know. <laughs> it's just so, so weirdly, weirdly set up, you know, to the point where, like, he didn't argue with, with her. He didn't uh, say, no, this is not how it, this should be done or anything like that. It was just like, okay. And then he texts Drew, and then that was the rest of the night. <laughs> yeah, and and the fact that 
the roster is taking marching orders from Karen. They're not following Jeff's lead because if they had, they wouldn't have, you know, come in from the get go looking for a fight. Karen was opposed to this from the very beginning. Like this was established the first time Jeff ever came back for that King of the Mountain match. Right. And I don't, the second that she, you know, laid out her master plan is that I did it for you. And what the roster didn't wait for Jeff to make an action. They came down basically in sync with Jeff. Yeah. So I, it's kind of obvious. Jeff's not the one in control here, which is, it, it's a very weird set of circumstances. The guy that's supposed to be in charge clearly isn't. And yeah, you know, it just makes the storyline much more, much muddier than I think it needs to be. Totally. I, and that's, that's where I stand. I, I just, there's, there's too many questions that I have. I mean, he's got an obvious motive and Karen explained that, but the fact that Karen had to explain that is, is just weird. <laughs> yeah. So where, where do you see this going? Do you, do you, because I think at first we were all under the assumption this was going to be a short lived thing, you know, maybe, a, maybe a month or two before they go their their own separate ways. But after this segment and how it went down and all that stuff, do you, do you still feel that way? Do you think that this is going to be a short-lived thing, maybe until, you know, Bound for Glory, which is October 8th? Do you think, it, you know, that's where they, they end this? Or do you think this is going to be the, the long-term move? I think it is long-term. I'm, I'm betting on Sanjay taking the X Division title from... Tigre Uno. Um, I'm betting on... Actually, I'm not really sure where the King of the Mountain Championship is going to sit because initially I had a hard time seeing Rude lose, but I I don't know. It's PJ Black just got that belt and he's defended it once, at, at least in TNA. I have no idea if he's defended it all in, in GFW. But yeah, it, it just seems like the moves that are being set up have, have a long goal ahead of them so yeah i think this is going to extend past bound for glory as a matter of fact i wouldn't be surprised if bound for glory was like tna's low point where gfw is in control like it's it's tna's version of the empire strikes back right. and we're gonna have to wait for return of the jedi so long term you see this as an aces nates type of thing where it continues to be gfw versus tna for a year year and a half or do you think that they just drop that or have GFW completely take over and rebrand everything uh, or what? I mean, just because we, we know there there is another TV show, Amped, that they've done tapings for. Um, we do know that he was trying to get TV, like a TV deal for that. So do you think that's still in play? Do they have two two shows or or is this it? I have a hard time seeing this angle itself last as long as Aces and Aids went. Um, I do think that TNA and GFW are going to interact perhaps that long. And it would not surprise me to see Impact and Amped played as kind of Raw and SmackDown used to be. Um, Dixie said some time ago that having a second TV show is the end goal. Um, and I think we all assumed that Explosion was eventually going to be that show, but that's clearly not happening. So Amped might be it. Yeah. All right. Well, that wasn't the only thing to happen uh, this episode. Um, that seemed to be one of the major focuses. But we also had uh, we also had some work with the Revolution, and I, I started getting really excited about this. So you basically had uh, James Storm making it very clear that that. Mahabali Shira is is done with the revolution. He's no longer going to be a part of it, even though pretty confident we already knew that. But he had to reiterate it and then said that tonight they're going to take what belongs to them, what the company has held back from them kind of thing. So tag team title match, uh, the revolution with Manic and Abyss versus the Wolves. Wolves win. Jeff, I'm sorry, James Storm uh, is in that uh, is in that King of the Mountain number one contendership match and, and loses. So, okay. <laughs> Revolution is still a big part of TNA as far as them getting TV time and them having uh, the ability to have those backstage segments, but it's still not equaling wins. 
Why, why do you think that is? It, it's really hard to say. Uh, I'm, I can't say with certainty that the revolution was ever supposed to succeed because they were losing right from the get-go. And yeah, outside circumstances have impacted them quite harshly. You know, Sonata leaving the company and, and leaving them in kind of a, a weird spot. But, you know, I, I was expecting two straight losses for the revolution that night. Um, Manic and Abyss is a really garbage tag team, uh, mostly because of Abyss. Abyss, yeah, yeah. But, and I, I've been forecasting that, you know, Shara left and Manic was going to be right after him. It might take a little bit longer now. Manic still seems to be, I guess, afraid of Storm. But, you know, that split has eventually got to happen. It's It's got to be Storm and Abyss going up against Koya and Manic. So... I don't know. I wasn't really expecting much. I I did like the fact that Storm was in that high profile match. I think it's fitting because even if only for a week, he was a former world he- world heavyweight champion. So that was nice, but I wasn't expecting anything to come from it. And for three to five seconds, he was a former member of Beer Money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I appreciate that little tease every time they get in there and. They, they make the eye contact, and I think this is the first time people have been chanting beer money at them yeah. in a while that that's happened, but yeah, I, I appreciate that. All right, so uh, let's let's go ahead and talk about the rest quickly. Uh, knockouts, we had some more development as far as uh, the title race as well as the dollhouse. Velvet Sky uh, versus Brooke for the Knockouts Championship ended in a uh, double DQ or a draw or something. I don't know. I don't know how they how they phrased it. But uh, basically, yeah, the Dollhouse ran down, attacked both Brooke and Velvet. Afterwards, Rebel comes down to make the save. Only, only the turn on Velvet, uh, which is really strange. And yeah, so now Rebel is a part of the Dollhouse. So they added a new member. It's not just Marty Bell and Jade. It is also Rebel. Uh, thoughts? Thoughts on that? Of all the people you go to to replace Taryn, Rebel really wouldn't have been high on my list. I don't know if she's really improved backstage as a wrestler. It it didn't really seem like it. It's hard to tell with that sort of gang beatdown, but Taryn's just going to be really hard to replace. Yeah. Even with just the entire roster at your disposal, not many of the girls measure up to Terran in that capacity. I, I also thought it was kind of random. You know, the, the last time Rebels even looked at the dollhouse, she was on the other side of the war from them along with Brooke. I, I suppose they're going to cast this as you didn't come check on me when I was in the hospital with that injured hand. And you never texted me. You never checked up on me. Now I'm going to make you pay for not paying attention to me. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it was there. It served a purpose. It's not like that tile match was going to go anywhere anyway. Again, the match was, it was there. It was yeah. all right. But you know, I just don't feel like I'm ever really going to enjoy a knockouts match unless Gail, Taryn, or Kong are involved. Right. Anymore. And that, that's that's sad. Yeah. And we, we should acknowledge, though, that Velvet was back to the, the grungy punk look. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Like, it was back to that, like, attitude and everything. So, um, all right. Trying to think. Anything else that, that took place um, as far as worthwhile to talk about? Oh, yeah. I mean, EY. Took Chris uh, yeah. Melendez's leg. Which, uh, you know, that's not going to be the end of it. No, it's not. Well, because Chris Melendez, uh, while he was defeated, he still stood right back up. And EY cheated to do it. Nobody yeah. called him on it there. But, you know, they're going to go back and look at it and reference that and go go all gung-ho for his push for revenge. <laughs> gung-ho. <laughs> yeah. Uh Matt Hardy is your number one contender for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, uh, apparently. Apparently, you can just ask for it, and you will receive. Uh, so the the deal, though, is that EC3, while he accepted the one more match challenge, if Matt loses, Jeff becomes his personal assistant. 
do you see this as the return of damn it <laughs> what I totally, for, I totally forgot what his name was now. Willow. There we go. Is this the entry point for Willow to make a comeback? Huh. I, I never really would have thought of that. I don't think so. Just because EC3 knows that Hardy is Willow. Like, he spent months hunting for him along with Spud in the, in, in the uh, North Carolinian bush. So I don't think that would fly. Maybe Hardy introduces another character. He's got like six of them in his closet somewhere. But I kind of have a hard time seeing this as anything other than, you know, Hardy puts up with it for a few weeks. He endures the abuse and then finally he has enough and he whoops EC3's ass. And then somehow that'll get him a title match. Um, yeah, yeah, that's about how I'm expecting it to go. Uh, with Matt Hardy losing to start it off, of course. Yeah. I definitely don't see Matt for champ ever happening. No, uh, and hopefully not. I mean, to to take the title off of EC3 at this point, uh, I think would be a, a major mistake. So, um, yeah. I did really enjoy that moment where Matt made his lobby for one more shot and EC3 whispers in Tyrus' ears and Tyrus of the... <clears throat> That little moment, I love that smirk. That was so perfectly played. Yeah. I just really enjoyed those two together. All right. Well, that was pretty much the week that was in TNA. So let's go ahead and talk about the best and worst things that happened this week with win and fail. Nick, what was your win of the week? I'm going to say Drew Galloway. Uh, specifically, his position as a top guy, really the top guy in this fight against GFW. He exposed the, uh, the Jarrett attack. Uh, he picked the wrong Jarrett, but he still narrowed it down to a Jarrett. Um, and I don't really see anybody usurping that role, at least not for a while. Maybe he'll eventually get sidelined with an injury, kind of like Austin Aries did against Aces and Eights when that started off. But I don't really see anybody else major stepping up to that role. Possibly rude if you know, he goes full on baby face and joins the fight after losing to PJ Black. But yeah, I, I just really enjoy that Galloway is getting a chance to show his chops in that sort of role. Yeah. And, uh, you know, overall, I think he is of that caliber as far as compared to the rest of the uh, as far as, you know, the rest of the roster. So, yeah, I'm I'm all for that. Uh, I think my my win of the week is that we finally Something that happened on TV finally caught up with commentary from three weeks ago, and that is the TNA versus GFW thing. It finally came to fruition, uh, so that's good. That's a good thing. Now everything kind of makes sense. Um, I just wish they didn't jump the gun with the accusations that this was a, you know, uh, an invasion of some sort, even though it never really was presented as such. Yeah. All right. Fail. What was your fail of the week? I'm actually going to make the uh, the invasion my fail. Not the fact that it happened, but rather the reveal. Because like I said, Jeff was just so clueless for the beginning of it. And again, not a problem with Karen being the instigator. It's just, if you had to go that route, I'd have much rather have had it that Jeff was in on it the whole time and he was just playing innocent rather than you know being innocent and dumb. So yeah, it's, it's just a matter of presentation for me. I didn't like it. Yeah, and let me add on to that. While... I, while I, I like the fact that they're continuing on with the story, you're right. The, the presentation of it is, is, is just kind of off, uh, especially when you have Drew Galloway basically saying, you know, how wonderful it is basically that GFW and TNA are working together. You know, the competition uh, is a lot better than it used to be. All, it just basically praising it, then saying that Jeff planned it. And this was like his, this was, this was all like a a plan to invade or something along those lines. But why is that a problem? <laughs> Someone took out Bully Ray? O okay. <laughs> you know, like it, I think it, it was almost as if like he was he was praising. It was like a it was like a compliment sandwich. Right. You praise it. Yeah. And then and then there's that that little negative. I, I don't know. It just it was just odd. So, yeah. Yeah, presentation is still still bad, but I do like I do like the the, the feud now. Uh, speaking of presentation fails, I feel bad for Royal Red 
because when everybody's standing in the line together at the very end to cap things off, nobody's making a spot for him. And I get he's just a manager, but it looked really awkward to him trying to fumble away around. And then they turned around and he's right there in front of somebody. It's, oh, God. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it was just yeah, it was just awkward to watch. And I felt for him. All right. Next week, we've got Matt Hardy versus EC3 for the TNA World Heavyweight Championships. Uh, overall, let us know what you thought about this week's impact by leaving a comment over on our YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is where a lot of good comments are are being uh, placed. Uh, so keep the conversation going. Uh, keep the conversation going over there. Um, all you have to do is go to our YouTube channel. You can find those links at fanstalktna.com. And uh, yeah, it should be up uh, as soon as this podcast is available, actually. Final thoughts before we head out, Nick? No, sir. Okay. That's all the time we have for this edition of Fans Talk TNA. Again, the conversation doesn't have to stop here. You can join us over on YouTube as we continue the conversation with you. And if you are a paid member of the Squared Circle of Trust, uh, there is now a Slack community, and we've been We've been chatting pretty much for the last week and a half. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, just a little private place for us to talk. So to become a member of the Squared Circle of Trust, all you got to do is go to patreon.com forward slash fans talk and subscribe for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, you can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and Instagram. All of those links are available on fans talk TNA.com. See you guys next week. Go! Oh.